What it is, what it do. Guess what, y'all? We got us another one. We got us another one. We got us another one. I'm telling you, y'all just just stay close. Stick tight. This is going to be everything. I'm already excited and already motivated and already backing as far as what this is going to be. It's going to be what it is going to be. You might not see it as far as me being on here, me coming in live, me doing little posts. Dropping little tidbits of information. You know, that was a nice post you did. That one was too long. That one didn't make sense. I didn't get the other one. Trial and error. Trial and error is how anything is cultivated to be anything special. And if I thought I, that I was not special, I would give up. And giving up is the stupidest thing that I could possibly ever do when I'm already 100% stamp paid for and here now. So I'm going to give you what you asked for when you brought me here. I'm going to get it to you. I'm going to get to you. Mm, mm, mm. The <laughs> fuck you mean? Whew. Whew. Somebody caught me doing that too. Somebody caught me cursing. Caught me cursing. Caught me cursing the way I curse. Caught me cursing. <laughs> what did you just say? I said, the fuck you mean? What? What's wrong with that? I'm trying to clean it up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I know what it sounds like, but I never admit to what it is that I'm actually doing when I'm trying to be a little more Christian. The fuck you mean? You need the hook out of here, boy. And I, I use it with a, a, a forced H instead of an F. So I don't tell you to shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. You hear that? You hear how harsh and mean that sounds? But that means I really want you to stop talking because I'm about to tear your shit up. But I shut the hook up. And I put my H in there. So it's actually H that you're hearing. But F is what it sounds like. And I still feel good about when I say it. So if I cuss you out and use the H instead of the F, you might well get the F because that's how pissed I am. <laughs> and I'm using, you know, profanity. And I'm, you know, I give myself the credit when I don't say it as much. So, you know, I make me feel good. I don't give a shit how you feel. You're supposed to feel bad. That's why I'm cussing at you with the H or the F or the F-U-C-K, the H-U-C-K. What the fuck you mean? <laughs> My brain don't stop, son. Sometimes it keeps me up at night. <clears throat> you know what? And I'm not, you know, come on. There are people out here doing that right now. Trying to clean up the curse words, trying to clean up their behavior. And you, you know, hey. Everybody know they should do it. Some people just like, I ain't doing that. I have to talk to people all day long I don't like. I ain't got time to dog and worry about how I talk to them. I don't want them to think I like them. You say hook. I'm saying fuck. Fuck you. <laughs> Damn, dog. That sounds so hard. Good. <laughs> so, I, I, I jazz it up, you know, just to make it, make me, make me feel like I'm trying. So, I say hook. You shut the hook up and get the hell away from me, boy. Do y'all, who, okay, all my, oh, don't worry about it. all my 80s babies, they already know what I'm talking about. Uh, late 70s babies, y'all already know what I'm talking about. Y'all remember um, in the 90s, uh, Grand Pooba and Grand, uh, Brand Nubian, Grand Pooba, Heavy D and the Boys, they had that compilation rap album, Pete Rock and CL Smooth. And the song was called Don't Curse. I know if you're looking at this right now, some of y'all are reciting it, or you're smiling right now, or you're doing the part where, uh, damn. I, oh, Heavy D used to do the part that was so smooth. But all of it was just revolving around how they thought you could still make good hip-hop without using profanity so much and going so hard. And back then, it was like you were cursing as much as you've ever cursed before. <laughs> you was cussing hard You was NWA cursing You were cussing on the interlude You was cursing on the intro You was cussing on the outro You was cussing The entire rap was cursing And people was giving it such a bad connotation Like 
All they do is curse. All they do is call women bitches and shooting mother effers and mother effers getting mother effed up up in this mother effer and kiss my a and oh lord red man well, I love red man boy but he will curse you out. He curse about nothing. Anyway. They thought it was getting a negative connotation, and they were positive rappers. You know what I'm saying? Pete Rock, Seal Smooth, Heavy D, and the Boy. You know what I'm saying? Grand Poobah, Brand Nubian, Zulu Nation. Everybody then they was they were rappers. They were on the spiritual, and they were on the conscious, and they were on the upliftment, and they never changed that. So when they saw rap, you know, their wheelhouse getting a bad, you know, a bad vibe. It was like, okay, well, that's taken away from what it is we're trying to do. We're still trying to reach the brothers and the sisters out there who are trying to enjoy our music. This music that we've created, this new wave of expression that we've created, if it's getting a bad rap, we got to stand up for it. We got to fight for it. So we got to do something. The song came out more gimmicky, but it was still cool. It was still cool. And don't forget not to curse, you know. And they was spelling the F-U-C-K backwards and saying Koof. So for a while, we was going around. Of course we were. We were trending. Yes, we was, we was dick riding. We was following the trend. We loved it, though, because that's us. That was, another, that was another attempt for us to evolve and make sure people was giving us more credit than they were giving us criticism. So we said Koof. We said Koof. We said Koof. So, what the coof you talk about? And you and you would purposely say words so you could incorporate coof, even though it didn't. It sounded stupid, but hey, we trying to follow the trend of, of cleaning this shit up and making it a little more positive, so you know we don't get such a bad rap. We had our clothes on backwards, arms through this way, the front of the shirt and the back, and we were wearing crisscross jeans and fucking cross colors and. You know what I'm saying? Malcolm X hats, X hats, and you know what I'm saying? HBCU jerseys, and you know what I'm saying? Come on, man. We was doing our thing. We was fitting ourselves, and damn near every, every angle, we was trying to explore it and get us out there because this is us. This is the music we listen to. We listen to the curse words and the F-bombs, but we listen to Koof. If you say Koof, we're going to say Tish. If you don't want us to say shit, we're going to say Tish. If you don't want us to say fuck, we're going to say Koof. Whatever, just don't try to bury us and make it seem like we're nothing. The thing that we like don't matter, don't mean nothing. And right now, I am going to make an effort to trademark my own brand of cleaning up the foul language by saying I still huck your ass up if you touch me. <laughs> Mother hucker, you better not. You have to learn how to say it the way you can still get the effect. It's like smoking a light cigarette when you know you want to hit a Newport Long and you somebody give you a damn uh, Marlboro Light. You will suck the... <laughs> you will smoke it down to the filter trying to get that feel. But when you put it in enough logic and use it enough times, it'll still give you the same feeling. You still know, you still knew I was going to hook your ass up if you doggone touch me, like I said. And I bet you won't do it. Because it ain't going to matter what I say after that because you're going to be asleep. So hook with me if you want to. Get my marketing team together so we can uh, trademark that. Uh, might well make this money since we got here and I'm already, the, I'm already the spokesperson for bothering people and saying shit and people not liking me. Well, hell, I might well get paid for it. So hook them. <laughs>